Lord God, our Father, we are so grateful that you have blessed us beyond measure. And Father, we gather today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that you would bring every fiber of our being in the center of your will. Lord, we pray that you be glorified because you look upon us and see the reflection of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me really? Yeah. Oh my, oh goody, because I have things to say. Good. <laughs> and, uh, I'll say that first. I hope if we have any visitors, you've made a good choice this morning, especially in December. It's such a joyful time to come to chapel. You just welcome Jesus, and that's what we're doing today. There are a lot of announcements. Let me, in the back, I'm going to call your attention that the chapel Christmas dinner is December 10th, but if you're coming, you've got to do, you've got to reserve it today, okay? Otherwise, you better bring it to the fish salad or something like that. <laughs> so that's next week. And then the offering envelopes are out there, and you just find your name. And I always use that to find out what day, day or what the date is. That's what I count on. Um, the post poinsettias, you can purchase. They're $18 each. And that is you. They'll be displayed here, and then you can take one home. And then finally, um, there is a memorial service for Norma Gwynn on Saturday the 9th at Foothill Center, if you know, knew her. And Ginger's going to just ring my neck if I forget to say that two weeks from today, <laughs> I knew by the girl she'd be laughing. Yeah, two, two weeks from today, in the service is the cantata. And it's not mm -hmm. just for the chapel. It's for your friends and neighbors. If they love music, they love Christmas music, they're going to love this. So please fill up this place. It will be so, so wonderful. So I think, did I forget anything, anybody? Flowers. And the flowers, Melody reminds me, are not telling me. Oh, there they are. Dee Willie, in loving memory of her dear, dear husband, Don. She said, my life is not the same without you. You are deeply missed, and you will remain in my heart forever. Mm -hmm. He was a sweetheart of a man. We used to look and see what he was doing to help. Yes? I realize 
He shares. He comes and he stands in that yoke with me and he listens. He takes the hardest part. Do you ever notice that? He lets me carry what I'm going to carry, but he's lifting and he never, ever leaves me. He is gentle and humble. His yoke that he has me carry is comfortable. Okay? So we don't have our moms and dads anymore, but we do always have him forever and ever. So we're going to start Advent today. Such a happy time of the year. So let me invite the Advent celebrators right up here. <clears throat> Leave it to Nancy to wear purple for the first purple Ooh. candle. Good girl. <laughs> On this first Sunday of Advent, we light the first purple candle, the prophet's candle. The Old Testament has a chain of prophecies about the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. More than 700 years before his coming, the prophet Isaiah identified him with five names. He said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. How lovely. Oh, good. That's why I give him the hard talk. And in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Matthew 3.13. And now if you would kindly join me, and we'll say the Advent prayer. Lord, as we begin our journey in this Advent season, we will face many distractions from the true meaning of Christmas. Help us keep our minds on what this season is about, so our lives may be filled with peace and be okay to bring. Amen. So if you'll stand, and we're going to sing together. 
come together to gather in your name. You are present. And Father, we pray that you would touch these bodies of clay. And thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength for today's journey. And Father, we pray that you would be glorified. We ask your blessings on Bella Guzman this morning. And Lord, we ask that you would continually undergird your people as only you can. And Lord, as you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join with us as we sing a little loud better.
be a blessing to many because of our ability to give into your kingdom. Father, we're so grateful for those who have given for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that you bless this offering and gifts. May they be received in Jesus' name and bless the giver. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
and thank you for being here. Because if you weren't here, it would be a lonely place. My wife and I would have to do this ourselves. But we are grateful to God and grateful for you because we expect God to show up when we gather together in his name. Yes. I want to share with you this morning a few minutes about this great mystery of his coming. I am so grateful that in his coming, he included us. He just did not come for just a specific group of people, but Jesus came for all of those who were created in the image and likeness of God. He knows that he had preference to come to the children of Israel, but he could have come to anyone, hello, to give us this great plan of salvation. Imagine with me having to live in a place where you were surrounded by enemies and your country's allies are pressuring your leaders to join forces. The pressure and stress is distracting from them looking not to the Lord for direction, but looking to their own strength and their own resources rather than seeking the will and wisdom of God. Leaders become reactionary because of the pressures. And they make decisions for peace, for the illusion of peace that escapes them. We know that the Bible says in Ecclesiastes verse 1, 9, what has been will be again. What has happened and what has been done will be seen again. There is nothing new under the sun. So in that day, when the prophet spoke, there was turmoil, there was frustration, there was anxiety, there was a lack of hope. Do we see the mirror of that time with our day? In a day that Judas enemies surrounded them and seemed to grow strength and tighten their grasp, which would send them into Babylonian captivity. God gave a prophetic word of hope. Aren't you glad for hope? That God has given us hope in re regardless of how our lives may intertwined with other people's lives and how our lives may not measure up to what our expectations are. But God gives us hope. And God sent a word prior to receiving the words uh, from Isaiah. They were in trouble. They wondered if God was for them or against them or if he simply had abandoned them. Does that sound familiar to where we are today? The word of the Lord came to Isaiah at a critical time when people were losing hope because of their continual conflicts between the surrounding nations. Imagine we live in the great United States of America. We don't have to worry about bombs being dropped on us or artillery is being pointed toward our direction. We don't have to run and hide and, and find a place of safety in our lives because we are blessed in this United States of America. The word of God came to Isaiah during that time. It was 740 years before the, a pivotal night in the obscure, obscure little village of Bethlehem that the prophetic message was to take place and the mystery revealed of the Messiah. As citizens of America, we have no clue as far as what it's like to live under the duress of stress and conflict from surrounding countries 
dropping bombs on us. The scripture text this morning is Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Verse 6. For unto us, unto us who were outside of having an intimate relationship with God. Unto us who decided that it was better for us to choose our own way rather than look to God. Unto us a son was given and the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God addresses the needs of his people by selecting his only begotten son to be a child whose name would signify the presence of God. Emmanuel, God with us. The Jewish nation and the world at large would receive a gifted child who possessed the spirit and will of God. This holy child will be sent to us from above and not from the defilement and corruption of earth. He would be God incarnate in human flesh. This glorious prophecy of the birth of Messiah reminds Israel of a great hope that Messiah would bring deliverance, truth, and justice. Is that something we would need today in our time? It's amazing how sometimes history seems to repeat itself. And the child, Jesus, had to fully identify with humanity. God could have sent anybody. He could have sent an angel. He could have sent a grown man. But God chose a child to display his life as the servant that is of God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7 says, He made himself God incarnate in flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. No reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men like you and I. As a child, he would feel everything that we felt. And there is nothing more weaker, more helpless, more dependent than a child. God chose a child. God chooses weak things to confound the things that are mighty, the things that people look up to and install as great and mighty and powerful. And he chose a child to bring into the world to be his representation. As a child, he would go through the stages of growth. He was born of a virgin conceived by Holy Spirit, and that made him the perfect sin sacrifice because he knew no sin. He had no sin. But we were conceived in sin because of the nature of our foreparents. We were conceived and we couldn't help but sin because it was in our nature, it was in our DNA. But it was not in the DNA of Jesus Christ. He was sinless. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we, for we did not have, we do not have a high priest who is 
is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are. Anybody been tempted? Some of you were tempted not to come this morning, but you made it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You resisted the temptation of saying, well, I'll just roll over here. I don't really feel like it. <laughs> but somehow you made it. Somehow you purposed in your heart to come to celebrate with us and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But he would be acquainted with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we but yet without sin. God had made man for a loving relationship. God created us in love. He created us with intent, with purpose, that we would have a continual communion, relationship, conversation, intimacy with him. That, you know, sometimes people live together for so long that they know each other's thoughts. <laughs> and they finish their sentences, which frustrates the other person. Well, let me just tell you. And God wanted the kind of relationship where we would know his thoughts, where we would know his will and it would not be confusing. We would not struggle with knowing the will of God. He made it up, he made us as holy creatures that would reflect him in this earth that he had created. And from the very moment of man's sin, God purposed to redeem us and restore our relationship with him. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God promised to defeat the serpent through the offspring of the woman. He was deceived, and therefore, children that were born from her would be born into sin. Adam willfully sinned because God told Adam first not to touch the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, I place before you two trees. One, was everlasting life. The other one was the knowledge of good and evil. Stay away from them. How many times have you told your children to stay away from things that were evil? <laughs> and they just went right ahead and did exactly what you wanted them not to do. That was in their nature. That is in human nature. It doesn't always choose the things that are proper and godly to glorify God. But it chooses things, our nature chooses things that pleases us, that satisfy the longing of this flesh and sends us outside of the will of God. Romans chapter 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but, and I love a but when God is in it. <laughs> But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord, yes. for the blood in that word. You, he did not leave us hopeless, yes. but he gave us hope to know that he loved us and he was willing to risk coming in human flesh to speak into our lives and to have a relationship with us. We were given the Son of God, God incarnate in body and human flesh, to live among us in perfect unity with God the Father and Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person. It is not a it. It is not a thing. It is. He is a person. The third person in the Trinity. We were given Jesus Christ. And this child would one day rule as king of kings and lord of lords, reigning over all the governments of the world during his millennium and beyond. Revelations chapter 22, verse 5. Amen. 
Jesus is going to reign. Amen. Amen. And his government, the government of Christ, is going to be on his shoulders. And he is going to rule and reign over all the governments of the world. And there will be peace. Yes. Glory to God. Yes, glory We won't have to pray for peace because we will be in the presence of peace. And we will have peace in our hearts and in our souls and we will rejoice in the God of our salvation. He is called Wonderful Counselor and He transcends human understanding. Do you understand God? Can we ever understand God? No, we cannot. We can trust Him. We can believe Him. We can rely upon Him. But we cannot know Him in great detail. Jesus says, you that have seen me, you have seen the Father. But Jesus gives us a glimpse of the Father. We don't know God in great detail. But through the life of Jesus Christ, He gives us a glimpse of the Father and His love and His grace and His mercy and His kindness and His forgiveness and His long suffering and His peace. We are blessed beyond measure. Amen. Amen. This glorious prophecy of the birth of Messiah reminds Israel of that great hope. And we are so grateful to God that we have a great hope. As a child, he would be dealing with all the things that we deal with as human beings. He is the wonderful counselor. He transcends human understanding. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Praise God. We have many thoughts, do And some we don't want to keep. Lord, let that thought be beyond me, far beyond me. Because every thought that enters our mind, we do not need to react upon it. We need to make sure that we are seeking the counsel and wisdom of God. Lord, if that's not you, let it depart from me. If that's not your will, let it depart from me. If that's not your way, let it depart from me. Lord, I want to be in the center of your will. I want to walk by faith in this life and not be conflicted with what I see yes. and what I hear yes. and how I feel about all that I've seen and all that I've heard, that I will trust you. He is the mighty God who operates outside of human limitations. He created all things. I am so glad that I don't have to depend upon my limitations yes. and your limitations. Yes. That I can depend and look to God to do those things that cannot be done through human will and human endeavor. He created all things. John chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 says, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Amen. I've seen the light go out of people. I stood by deathbeds and see the light depart <coughs> from that living being. The light of life in us comes from God. Yes. Yes. Through His Holy Spirit. And we are to show that light to the world. He is the mighty 
God. And we do not have to worry about what we can't do, but who we serve, who is able to do above and beyond what we ask. In him life, and that life was the life of mankind, in him dwells all the fullness of the deity in bodily form. And that's Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 21 says, Now to him, it's kind of like a benediction, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. What power is it that works in us? What is the power? that is in us that works for God's glory. It is the person of the Holy Spirit. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God is in you to will and to do of his great pleasure. Yes. Hello. Amen. We have a little glory in us to do the will of God and to please God and to bring God glory and to praise Him. We do not lack resources. Hello. Because He is able to do exceedingly what? Above what? All. All, just some things. All things. We do not lack resources. Hello, somebody. Yes. Praise God. Praise him. Isn't that wonderful? We don't lack resources. Amen. You feel like you lack resources. I'm, I'm getting your vibe here. No. No. We do not lack. We're not people who lack because we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. He is called everlasting Father because every period of time exists in Him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the universe, Jesus. Amen. He alone decreed that I am the way. Amen. Jesus did. And others say that there are other ways to God. Jesus made it very clear that he was the only way to God. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except what? By me. Now there may be other people or situations that lead you to Jesus. I'm not discounting that. But I'm saying in order to get to God, there was only one sacrificial lamb that made it possible for all humanity to come into the presence of God, and that was Jesus Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection made a way possible for every created being to come into the presence of the living God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Nobody, to my recollection, was died and was buried and rose from the grave and said, all power and all authority has been given into my hands except Jesus Christ, yes. Yes. whom I dedicate my life to. Yes. He is the call, the Prince of Peace, because he is the one who makes peace, <laughs> especially between God and man. And that's where we need to make peace with God first. Yes. If we do not make peace with God, how can we make peace with man? Yes. Because God knows everything. He knows man's heart. He knows man's desire. And so if we are at peace with God, we can be at peace with our enemies. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Jesus 
said, love your enemies. But if you don't have yes. the peace of God that surpasses human understanding, how can you make peace with an enemy? Yes. Because you see the enemy a certain way, and you see the enemy as to be destroyed. But we don't know what God is doing, even in the hearts of, of our enemies. He is the Prince of Peace. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. You have been introduced to perfect love. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Yes. When you asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, you were introduced to perfect love. And the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. Yes. Some of you are still dealing with fear. You just need to speak to fear and says. Depart from me, because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And God has me in the palm of his hand. Yes. Ordering my steps. The Bible says that God orders the steps of a good man, and I would say a good woman, who trust and believe and rely upon him. Yes. God is ordering our steps, even though we don't know what the future holds. We know who we have trusted. We know that he is able to keep that which we've committed against him to that day, against, uh, committed to him against that day. Whenever man establishes peace in the land, it is always conditional, never lasting because of human nature, and human nature is corrupt and sinful. Peace will never last with man. It's impossible for him to maintain peace. Just think of yourself. You have a nice meal. You get full. You get happy. The next day, something happens to disturb you of your peace. Another scandal. Why are they calling me? Why do they keep calling me? I'll give you a secret here. I'll share my secret with you. When these call you, and some of you have have called me and I said this. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Jesus is Lord. How may I direct yes. your call? <laughs> Oh, the 
greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is yet to be fulfilled. Scripture, verse 6, has been fulfilled. This has yet to come to pass. Jesus reigning on David's throne has yet to be fulfilled. When this happens, all enemies of Jesus Christ will be defeated. Yes. He will reign with him throughout, and we will reign with him throughout yes. all eternity. Yes. Because the victory is in the Lord. Application, yes. God has provided an eternal hope for all people to live in his presence. True peace can only be received through a relationship with the Prince of Peace. How's your relationship going? How's your relationship going this morning with the Prince of Peace? Yes. Do you still have peace with all of the things that are going on in this world to derail you from concentrating on your purpose. What is your purpose? Your purpose is to dwell in the presence of the living God. That is your purpose. That is your purpose. Your purpose is not to get hung up with political <coughs> manipulation. Your purpose in these last hours of the church is to focus on Jesus Christ. To see Jesus only and to see him that is our purpose, to live in such a way, when the Lord comes, we gladly go to be with the Lord. Yes, amen. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful that you sent your Son to die for us, that we might have the right into your divine presence. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done to extend us mercy upon mercy that we would yield to the right of way of God and say yes to the Lord and we would receive your gift and forgiveness of sin. Father, we bless you and we praise you. Thank you for this day and this opportunity to worship you in spirit and truth again.